This is going to be a fighter and a tank. That is so awesome. And then this humunculi, humunculi is going to be someone who's just going to wisp around and try to grab ingredients. So Nick has got some nice, nice little mix and balance of humunculi here to help him accomplish his goals. Join the team. Hey team, this is the McGuire Review, and we are going to take a look at a brand new game that is coming from Peacock Tabletops called Materia Prima. All right, Bear, let me have the uh, let me have the box here. Thank you. Let's take a look at this real quick. Materia Prima is a uh, alchemist type game. It says the Alchemist Guild, and you do play the role of an alchemist in this game, and you get to create and transmute various different elements into uh, different other types of elements. You get to create these little uh, humuculis or uh, humuculis or homunculi, homunculi. We're going to go with homunculi because uh, I just like that better. And those are super sweet. We'll talk about those in a minute. This is a game for two to four players, 12 plus, although I think you can get some younger, um, I think you get some younger kids in uh, younger than 12. This one is marked 12 plus, but the game is pretty simplistic and straightforward. The only complexity that you're really going to run into with a title like this is your element track and what you will need to create various different elements. But, but once you understand that, it's very straightforward. And it makes a lot of sense. And 90 minutes. So it's got a nice hour to an hour and a half uh, long flavor to the game. And that's really because of what's required to win this game. We'll talk about that here in a second. Fair. Thank you. Okay, we are going to do another giveaway on this one as well. This is a prototype copy of this game, okay? So nothing here is production quality. They are going to be coming to Kickstarter very soon, near the end of this month, the month of July. We're going to see a Kickstarter for this, and this is the prototype edition. Uh, however, I will say, if you put this out on the table in front of your gaming group, your friends, you want to play this game... It's, it looks pretty production. This is a pretty high quality prototype edition of this game. So that's going to be it. An awesome giveaway on an awesome prototype edition of this game. Team, you know how it works. Hit that subscribe button. Comment below. We are going to run this all the way through the end of the Kickstarter. So right when the Kickstarter is over, Bear is going to hit the button of fate. And one lucky team member is going to get selected and shipped to you for free. The game as you see it right here on the table. Okay, so what are you going to get in Materia Prima? you are going to get a pretty awesome experience in a box. And that's how I like to kind of term this game. It really gives you a fun, smooth, it's a very relaxing gameplay experience that, that I have found. Although you do have two to four players working around this land, searching for elements and being alchemists and creating various different things, it doesn't feel like it's this massive amount of like competition. It doesn't always feel like it's this, you know, strenuous competition of one player battling another player. There is combat in this game. However, um, the combat is very simple, very straightforward. It very much feels like you're on this uh, personal quest to achieve your goals to win the game. And everybody else is just sort of a deterrent to that. They're sort of in your way. So you will find yourself running into one another, going for the same types of resources. Maybe another player gets clued in on what you might be trying to accomplish and tries to stop you, either by trying to combat you with their little homunculi, homunculies, or their alchemists themselves, and going into combat. Artwork is absolutely fantastic. I love the artwork. It's very clean, very crisp, bright. You've got all these custom different homunculies that are available to you and every single one of them is unique so all of them have different powers like this one here uh, allows you to uh, not take any fight combat actions but you get two uh, defense you can carry up to four things and you get two actions where let's say this uh, stone one right down here which is carrying two pieces of iron already can fight Two has two combat dice that it can use when it fights. Has two defense. It can only carry uh, one object, so I don't know why I'm carrying two. And it has two actions. 
So that's what uh, this one can do. So every one of them is a little bit different. He sh should not be carrying two, so we'll put that back over there. So every one of these is a little bit different. Of one that's up here that, that this one here for this uh, alchemist actually allows three actions, so it can move across the board pretty quickly, kind of wisp around and pick up things for this alchemist. That's primarily what these little guys are going to be used for, that you're going to be using alchemy to create, is they're going to go out and help... Uh, gather elements to be able to go back to your elemental chart here and create other types of elements. They're going to be used to do combat. They're going to be used to block other alchemists from going into certain areas. And that's primarily what they're going to be used for. And you can use them on your turn. You can have them to three of them at any one point in time. So you can imagine that at any one point in time, you'll have your alchemist and up to three more of this homunculi. And then when it's your turn, you'll be able to kind of move all of those around the board, which is pretty cool and will provide you quite a bit of option around the realm here. So what are you trying to accomplish? To win this game, well, to win this game, you need the highest wisdom points. And there's a way at the very end, you'll tally up everything that you've transmuted and you've created. We'll talk about how the items, you kind of have to create them with alchemy, which I think is a really cool concept. But you'll tally up everything that you've kind of created and different resources that you have, and you'll get a final wisdom score. Now, wisdom score, the player with the higher wisdom score, wins the game. However, to trigger endgame is a little bit more tricky. To trigger endgame, you have to be an alchemist that has completed your one single secret quest. So when you begin the game, you will get a random secret quest. And there's a deck, there's a few of them here. And that's our secret quest you have to complete. So as you're playing the game and trying to collect... Uh, various different elements, not only to transmute and get yourself different pieces of item, get yourself homunculi for more types of activity throughout the land, you're also trying to complete the secret quest. So for, for this alchemist right here, the secret quest is transmute three elements of gold and bring them to Hammer Breach. Well, Hammer Breach is one of the cities in this land, uh, and it's right here. It's right up here in the mountains. Here's Hammer Breach. And I've already got two pieces of gold transmuted so i've kind of begin the game i've played a few rounds and then we're going to give some gameplay of kind of taking on where we left off and it is this person's turn to start so we'll leave that die there to indicate that so that's an example of a secret quest here's another example of a secret quest here from this alchemist which is burn down the city of windshire by placing nine elements of fire in it so over the course of the game, you're going to want to start collecting. And you see here, she's got a couple pieces of fire element. She's got in her pack, she needs to transmute, kind of transfer that or discard it over to her tower. We'll talk about how these towers work. It's a really cool concept. But she needs to get that into her tower. Or she can just hang on to it to bring it over to Winshire and, and drop it off. And she wants to drop off all of those elements in Winshire. And once there is nine of them, then the, the city of Winshire will burn down and the secret quest will be accomplished. So one of the criteria to ending the game is you have to have your secret quest completed. You have to have at least one soul stone. So these soul stones you can look at as being almost like lives in this game. And you can you lose them and you can lose all of them actually. And when you do, you actually become a soulless one. You're still alive. You still take your turn just like you normally would. However, there's a different track here that you will look at on your player card that will uh, give you a little bit of a different ability. So if you're alive, you follow this track on, these are just your actions, it's your fight, defense, how much you can carry and the amount of actions you can take on your turn. And these are how many of those things you can do if you're alive. Here's how many of those things you can do if you're a soulless one. Combat is, is really amped up by that actual fight if you're a soulless one. And that's really just to offset and be able to, uh, you know, be able to take somebody out so you can get one of those soul stones back and then become uh, technically alive again uh, or have your soul back. And then everything else on this card is very simple. There's a spot to hold two equipment items. There is a spot to hold your philosopher's stone. That's another part that we're going to be working on to be able to end the game. And then a little spot here to hold all of your soul stones. Then you got your name. And then here at the bottom, each one of these alchemists do have a special ability. Like uh, she, for instance, has plus one element per mining action. So you want to remember that because every one of these uh, alchemists 
has that special, a different special ability. She can get uh, an extra mining action, so she's going to be able to gain up those elements pretty fast. And that's going to be good for her for her quest, because she needs nine of those fire elements to be able to burn down the city. So she's going to want to be hitting up the different areas of the board that have that fire element. And you'll see there's different elements, uh, basic elements, that are on this board in different locations. You need to get there and then spend an action to mine that element from that area uh, of the realm. And then you'll be able to gain that element here. And there's a bag here of lots of these elements. You'll be able to just take one of those and gain that if you mine it. You'll need those. And it's only going to offer the base elements on the board that then you can use to create these more second and third level advanced elements through the power of alchemy within your secret lab in your tower. And that brings us to the Philosopher's Stone. That is the third piece that you need to trigger endgame. So... One, you got to have your secret quest completed. Two, you have to have at least one soul stone. And three, you have to have created your philosopher's stone, which is the uh, ultimate power helping you achieve your, your quest as an alchemist. And that philosopher's stone does take three different components, three recipes. And that's what we're going to find here with these cards up here. These are just different recipes in the game, and you can only have up to three of these recipe cards in your hand at one time. As you offload things to your tower you can save recipes in your tower you can also you know once you create a recipe or complete it it will then go you know like this dagger has been created so it will go here it doesn't count against your hand size any of the humunculi you've created you'll just flip them up and then you will grab that put a put a stand on it put it on the board and start at your tower and then you can start moving it out that doesn't count against your hand size it's only the things that haven't been used yet so for our situation today, since we need to kind of see all the cards, these cards that are kind of down here together are the hand for each one of these alchemists. This alchemist here doesn't have any cards in her hand because she's actually used all of them. She's got one of the recipes for her Philosopher's Stone already underway. This has been already uh, transmuted. And you do need these Philosopher's Stones come in a one, two, and a three. And you'll find those by drawing cards from these recipes, specifically from the Philosopher's Stone deck. So you need a 1, a 2, and a 3 level recipe. And then you need to basically do what it says there at the bottom. This one, for instance, says you take 2 iron, um, and that's what it takes. It takes 2 iron to make this recipe. So once you transmute 2 iron, um, you can have this first part of the recipe. You just kind of tuck it under your Philosopher's Stone area and your tower. And then once you have the other two, you have then completed the Philosopher's Stone, and you would take a Philosopher's Stone here, and you put it on your character. That indicates your Philosopher's Stone is created, you have that power, and now it's all just down to completing that quest, and you're ready to trigger endgame. That's really what scales the game over the course of that hour and a half gameplay, is that, is that quest to actually obtain what you need for your Philosopher's Stone, and then being able to complete your quest along the way. So if you're smart about moving across the board, you're, you're sort of thinking about, both of those things at the same time. How do I complete my Philosopher's Stone and also kind of pick away at whatever my secret quest is at the same time? If you take that route of like, okay, I'm just going to focus on the Philosopher's Stone. Okay, I got it. Now I'm going to focus on my quest. You're probably not going to be the player that's going to trigger endgame and or win. Uh, you really have to think about those two components at the same time as you're moving around the board and optimizing those moves and, and those gatherings of elements to suffice those two components of the win condition or the end game trigger condition. So let's just do a quick look here. I've already got a game set up. We're going to get right into gameplay. The only thing we haven't talked about are these little tokens right here. These are tower extensions, which is really cool. Within each one of these cities, you can purchase a tower extension. Once you do, you just take another random tower extension and replace it. So when you get to a city, you can take an action to either research uh, in the library and and take one of these cards or you can purchase a tower extension and how you purchase those is very simple they'll just be an element that would be um, here on the side here that you'll pay and then you'll be able to get this tower extension and then this tower extension will just tell you that every turn you get an extra earth and how that works is you'll, you'll just take that and you'll get that immediately. Most everything else in the game, once you've acquired it somewhere, you have to travel back to your tower and drop it off and then do something with it. The only thing that's different in this game are these little tower extensions. As soon as you purchase it, it just automatically activates 
and you'll take it and you'll set it right here on your card and it will just there's a little spot for the tower extension you just set it right on your card and now your tower has that power and that ability and you can change that throughout the game you only can have one of them activated at a time but you can gain more and kind of switch them out and sort of change the way that your tower uh, activates and uh, that's the extensions so that's a pretty cool little thing that's in the game as well uh, however you got to have that element to be able to purchase it when you get to the city okay so let's go ahead we'll leave our we'll leave everything as it is right here uh, we've got everything we need and we're going to go ahead and continue our gameplay so we are going to start here with our alchemist uh, Pelo and he is ready to go so it is his turn he is right down here actually at his tower so you're going to start the game by placing you will take turns as players placing those towers in a spot on this map you can't place it where there's an element or a city you can place it about anywhere else so the towers have already been placed and you will start at that tower then you will venture out from the towers remember the tower's only purpose and it never moves from where you start it is that it's kind of your home base to be able to transmute it's where your lab is you have to go back there to kind of do whatever you're going to do with your elements Everything has to come back there, be deposited, and then you got to do something with it. So we got Pelo down here, and what we're going to do is he, let's look at his stuff here. So he's got one Humunculi, and he is right here. He's not carrying anything right now. He has got a ton of this element, so let's see what his secret quest is. Transmute three gold. All right, so it'd be nice to transmute another gold, and to do that, we need this element, and we need earth. So we need this one and this one to make gold, okay? Um... Okay, so let's grab this towers. This is a pretty cool looking tower. It's kind of like a tree house. So you can see there to make gold, which is this one right here. It's a second level element. We need these two on the side. You see those little lines on there? It's that easy. You just kind of, oh, if you want gold, it, it takes this one and this one. Well, if you want this element, you need, well, you need gold and you need, I believe this is glass. So you'll need these two basics to make a gold. You need these two basics to make a glass. Then you'll need a gold and a glass to make this. And that's how that works. And every time you do a transmutation, it will take an action of yours. And you can see right on your card how many actions you have. All three of these characters have three actions, and that's generally how many actions you will have for every alchemist um, in this game. Okay? So his quest, he's already got two gold. He might as well, he might as well kind of stick with the gold thing. And then what do we need? We, we probably should pick up... we got two items here. Two earth can make us a pouch... That's cool. It allows us to carry more stuff, but we already can carry a bunch of stuff. Um, we need an iron to be able to make this helm, and we need two uh, of these to be able to make this cloak. Okay, so I need iron. I need iron fire, and I need water. Water is a little triangular one up here in the water. Iron fire and water. Okay, so with iron fire and water... We got water up here, we got fire down here, and this looks like someone dropped a fire here. And if you can't carry that much, you gotta just drop it, so it looks like someone dropped it. Um, she's probably gonna go for that fire, definitely, because she's trying to get more and more fire. Okay, we got fire, we got water. I need iron for the helm. Um, Alright, so I'm gonna take my actions and I'm gonna go one, two and three that's my third action i can't do anything else if i had another action i could go ahead and mine and pick this up but i can't let's look at a special ability plus one mining action per turn sweet so he actually has four actions if in fact you're mining so i'm going to go ahead and pick up that fire and put that right in his backpack he can carry six items so now we got now we got a fire um and i need the fire and i need iron to be able to get this thing going um Okay, that's good. I want to do with my homunculi, which has two actions and can carry four things. I'm going to go get some go get some earth because I'm going to need earth to be able to get that third gold. So I'm going to go one, two. That's as far as he can move. That's all the actions that he's got. He's done. All right. Player turn is now over. It's now to this alchemist. So you can see just how quickly the player turns go. It isn't like you're going through a bunch of phases when it's your turn. You just take your actions, next player's turn. And then you're thinking about, okay, what do I, what's the combination that I need to get that next alk, uh, you know, that next component that I need to transmute. And that's what really gets fun with this game. Okay, Wilco, what are you going to do? You got two fire. This guy's got to say, okay, for the first action, I'm going to go ahead and take my homunculized action first. He's got two, and I'm going to go ahead and deposit over here this iron that, that, that this one is carrying. 
And I've already got, I already transmuted an item. So any items that are already out that are locked in here, it means literally I got water and I got earth and I used those back at my lab to transmute it with alchemy and I turned it into a dagger. So now I have a dagger that I have plus one attack. So now every time I attack, I can, I can roll one more dice than I normally would. So for this character, I'm only rolling if I'm alive, one die when I attack. Well, now I can roll two. So she's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more deadly, kind of rogue style now. Um, so that's good. For my second action here, what else do I need? I need more fire. Um, you know, it would be nice. I, I can't pick up and I can't research with these guys. So I do need more fire. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead for my second action and I'm going to pick up. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to stop. Why not pick up? Some water, I'm close. I can do some mining the next go around. I'm going to actually move down. You know what? I'm going to move up with her. So she has three actions, and I'm going to go for more fire. So one, two, three. So she's right up here now, and it looks like maybe to players that she's really been paying attention to fire. She might have a quest where she needs some fire. We're going to call him Nick. All right, Nick, what are you going to do, buddy? Um, what's your secret quest again? Place at least two homunculi around your tower and keep them until your next turn. Okay. Um, that is not a hard quest to do. So we got one homunculi. Let's get another one going. So I need two. What do I need there for that? I need, who? I need, um, air and I need fire to be able to do that. So I need fire and I need air. Well, we got air up here where I'm at. Perfect. So how much can I carry? Two. I'm going to go ahead and take my homunculi action first. I'm going to mine for one. I'm now full capacity and I have three actions to move. I cannot fight. So I'm going to go... Ooh, I'm going to go one, two, and three. I'm going to go right here. So I'm getting back to that tower. Now what I need to do is get fire and... Uh, more air. So I got. I think I got enough air. I have enough air. I have one fire back at my tower. Tower, perfect. So I need to go pick up some fire. I'm in Windshire. So what's going on in Windshire? Uh, I already have two cards. I have all three parts of my Philosopher's Stone because I got a one, I got a two, and I got a three. Perfect. So I don't need anything else there. I got enough homunculi. I don't want to use my actions. I'm just going to take off and go one. And your character can always be in the same space of any of their homunculi. I cannot cross through an area with any other player's homunculi or their alchemist. i got to move around them. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Action is over. Let's look at the special ability. Plus one recipe per research action. Well, you know what? I could have got a lot more cards, but I already have two. That would have been four. That would have been over my hand limit. I would have had a discard. So I could have done that, but I chose not to. Okay, she did no mining, but she gets plus one mining action. Let's not forget that. Okay, so that's where he is. Turns over, it's done. Now back to Palo here. What is he gonna do? All right, he is going to. Let's see. We need more. We need more fire if we want to get this, and it would be good if we did. Well, he has already. He's at three dice, so that's not too bad. Um. We need iron. Why did I go for the fire? Oh, I needed fire for that. He needs... He's at fire. He needs iron. He needs iron. Iron is all the way up here. Iron is on the lockdown. Okay, this is going to be dangerous. So we're going to go... We're, we're going in. We're going in. One, two, three. That's where he's going. Um, and he's just going to stop there. He's on, he's on the march for iron. His little homunculi is going to go down here for one action. For the second action, we are going to get some elemental power of earth, and we're going to hold that, and that's all the homunculi's actions because we want that earth to be able to create that gold. We also need we also need this water here, but this homunculi that's there. So we might do some combat. We could have done combat if we had another action, but we don't have any action. Otherwise, I probably would have fought that homunculi. All right, Wilka, what are you going to do? Wilka is going for fire, but fire is on the lockdown, so she can't get it. So you know what? She is going to combat. She's going to combat and try to defeat this alchemist. And if I'm able to beat Nick here, I will gain all of. I will gain his soul stone. I will gain what he's carrying automatically. Okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. First action. 
We're going to go into uh, combat because I had this extra. So I will be rolling two dice. I will roll those two dice for that combat. And I got one, two. Two hits against Nick. Nick has a defense of three dice. So he will roll three dice. The attack is two. Okay, Nick's defense is two. Okay, he got lucky because he rolled a two and a two blanks there. So he does successfully defend against that attack. Uh, and that's all that it is. Now, for my second action, I'm going to attack again. I do have three actions. That's uh, only a one, and he will defend. Oh, massive defense. No attack against Nick. For the third action, I will combat again. Come on, two. Can she get it? No, man. Nick is defending like a crazy person. Oh, also here I have plus one. Actually, I would be rolling four dice because I have the leather armor as well. So, yeah, there'd be no taking out Nick um, there on that. So, the combat was completely unsuccessful. I used all three of my actions to be able to do that combat. Uh, turn is essentially over outside of the homunculi, which is going to go ahead and use an action to mine and pick up this one item. It's going to use its second action to go back to the tower for safety, and now it's out of the way. Now, however, it has opened up this spot, which is going to allow um, our payload to be able to move right in easily without having to do any combat, but, you know, I'd rather do that than possibly lose this homunculi, so I'm moving back to the tower for safety, and upon the next turn, I'll use an action to discard. You don't get to automatically just discard. You do have to use an action for anything you're carrying to discard into your tower. However, if you get to your tower and you have enough stuff to just do a transmutation, the discard and transmutation is kind of one action altogether. Um, but for the homunculi, you do have to kind of use an action to discard that over there. Okay, back to Nick. Nick was going for that fire, so we're going to go ahead and use an action to grab some fire. There we go. And then we have uh, two more actions. He has plus one recipe. Not going to be able to use that. You know what? She's carrying two fire and a soul stone. Guess what, Nick? We're going into battle! So for the second action, Nick is going to attack. He only gets to attack with one die. And she gets to defend with three. So it is not a great chance to be able to do this, but we're going to go for it anyway. We need... Um, yeah, we need... Ugh, you know what? That probably wasn't smart. I should, probably should have mined more. Because I need, I need more fire. No, actually, I have enough fire. I need, um, I need, no, I have enough of everything, to tell you the truth. So I'm going to attack with the second action. Single hit defense is going to be three die. And it's a total defend. You know what? I'm giving up. I'm going to use my third action to uh, move right here and get try to get back to my tower. Okay. The wisp is going to go one, two, using that third action to deposit these elements into the tower and we're back safety of the tower turn is over we're back to Pelo here Pelo, what are you doing buddy all right he's going to move in here because he needs water that's one action second action we're going to mine and pick up some of that element and now we have um now we have what are we what are we doing now we have that element we need that element for the helm that gives us more defense so we also need stones. That was one, two. We're going to go three, and we're going to stop right there. It's kind of in the danger zone, but I'm trying to get to this iron because these two towers really lock down that element. So I'm trying to get there and get out before these alchemists make it all the way back. Okay, we're now... Uh, well, hang on. We got our homunculi. Homunculi is going to... What do we want to do? We, 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 I want that gold. So we're going to... We're going to use an action to mine... And then we're going to get, use an action to move. So we're almost back to our tower. And we can deposit. we got a ton of element back here. We get Palo back. We're going to be able to mine some gold. Transmute some gold, not mine. And then we're going to have our quest completed. And we've got one piece of our Philosopher's Stone. So maybe on the way back, I'm going to stop off at Windshire. And Windshire will allow me to get some Philosopher's Stone recipes. So I'm probably going to move my way back over to Windshire. Try to pick up another recipe for the Philosopher's Stone. And that would be my third card in my hand. And then get back to my tower and do some work on the gold for the quest. Yes! Feeling good about Palo. All right. Now we are at... Uh, it is uh, it is it is Wicca's turn, I believe. We just did Palo. Yes, it is Wicca's turn. So she is going to go up here. One action. She is then going to mine the fire. 
Get some more fire. What's her capacity? She can carry up to four things. She has three. For the second action, uh, actually she gets two fire for her special. So she is now full. Her pack only holds four. She's now completely full. Although, uh, that was one, two. She has one more action. So let's get moving towards Windshire. So let's just take that action to get out there. Where's your humunculi? It's down here. So this humunculi is going to go for... We've already got that. We've already got a dagger. Um, we're going to need more random stuff for creating. So let's just go... Let's go right... Well, let's use well, let's use one action to get rid of that. That's one action. And let's use a second action to go here. We're going to just keep mining water. We'll have kind of the lockdown on water. We're back up to Nick here. Nick is on probably a way back to his tower. So let's just go one, two, and we are now back to the tower. We're going to use that third action to do some transmutation. So let's go ahead and transmute a... Let's transmute a fire and a wind, and let's make uh, this right here the second level. Let's look up exactly what that is. The little the names are here um, in the instructions. That is a second level element, and its name is. Rule book is not that long. Okay, the name is copper. That's copper. So we need. How many coppers do we need? One or two? We need... I don't even know what we're doing anymore. We need two copper because we're trying to get this little humunculi up so we can complete that quest. So we're going to cash this in and we're going to get one copper element that we have created. We are also... That's the third action. We can't take any more. If we have, On the next turn, we're going to use a transmutation again um, to do another copper. And then we'll be able to get a homunculi ready to go for that quest. So that's the end of Nick's turn. Back to Palo here. Palo is going to move in one. Yes, he made it. He's going to use a second action to do that. He then can use a plus, uh, an extra action mining. He's going to do that to do that. He can carry a lot. He's got six in his pack he can carry. And um, that wasn't that wasn't a second the second action to do the mining, that other action was free based on his power. So we do have a third action, and we are moving out. Okay? So that's where Palo is at this point. We're now down to Witka here. She is going to uh, continue her movement to Winshire. So one, two. She's going to use that third action to, to um, drop these elements into the city of Winshire. And now she has one, two, three, four fire elements that she's dropped off in Winshire to burn that one to the ground. Okay? So she only needs five more elements and she's done. So her turn is over. We are going to mine the water here with our homunculi for one action and jump back to that tower for that second action for safety. Back up to Nick. Nick is now going to transmute and again, that's kind of a free, you get to transmute and discard at the same time if you have them all kind of freely there between your alchemist and your tower. Only the alchemist, if it's on a humunculi, you got to discard it. So we're going to do that again. We're going to get another copper. Now we have the, the second copper that we need for the humunculi transmutation. That was the first action. Second action, we're going to transmute. And now we have a new humunculi. So we're going to find... Uh, the little picture here, and it's this one. It's kind of a cute little guy. We're going to grab the stand and go ahead and put that on the stand. And then that's going to start at the tower. And now Nick has got two humunculi working for him. And we'll kind of move this card up here to show that it's a humunculi that's active. So let's look at this humunculi. What does it get us? Okay, fight of four. All right, this is a combat humunculi. Defense of three. All right, this one is pretty powerful. Can I carry anything? And it has two actions. So I'm going to use this humunculi as more of a humunculi. I'm going to use this humunculi as more of a uh, a tank, right? Well, like this is going to be a fighter and a tank. That is so awesome. And then this humunculi, humunculi is going to be someone who's just going to wisp around and try to grab ingredients. So Nick has got some nice... Nice little mix and balance of humunculi here to help him accomplish his goals. So that was the second action. And now let's look at our quest here again. So it says, place at least two humunculi around your tower and keep them until your next turn. Okay, so for the 
Uh, third action, I'm just going to go ahead and discard this to the tower, and I'm going to take an action to discard that. It's done. And now the Humunculi, Humunculi, let's stick with Humunculi. It can be Humunculi or Humunculi. I like Humunculi. So we're going to move out uh, right here, and we're going to move out right here. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, you know what? I can take a second action with this Humunculi, but he can't carry anything, so it doesn't matter. So it probably would have been smarter to do this Humunculi here, this Humunculi here. I'm going to take that second action to mine a silver. Why not? Okay, so I now have Humunculi that are surrounding my tower, and I have two, and they just have to stay in that spot until the, what is it, the end? Until your next turn. That's it. So as long as nobody combats these guys and they stay there, we're good to go. Now, if I was new to this game and playing this game, it's Palo's turn. So Palo has a choice here. He can continue to move back to his tower or whatever he wants to do, or he can say, hold up a second. This looks like a quest that's one of these win condition quests or, or end game trigger quests. Seems like old Nick here has got two, exactly two, humunculi that are on either side of his tower and just randomly sitting there. Um, somewhat odd, but maybe not. If you're a new player, you might not, you wouldn't know that. Now, if you've played this game a few times, you're going to start to learn what these endgame quests are, and then that's that helps scale this game, because as you play more and more, you're going to be like, oh, I see what you're trying to do, endgame quests there. And now you're going to try to stop that, because they have to sit there until the next turn. So it would be strategically for Palo to say, well, I'm going to attack this humunculi right here and try to kill it because if i can it's done it's gone because a defeated humunculi is removed from the game it's basically just dies and whatever it's carrying immediately becomes the property of the attacker or the winner those elements what is carrying one iron so palo is gonna but palo probably wouldn't know that as an as a new player so he's kind of focused in getting back and dropping these things off because he really wants to get this helm going so he's not going to chance that combat, and he's just going to move on. So we're just going to go one, two, three. And we're going to stop right there, and I will get a plus one mining action, and I am here. So I'm just going to go ahead and mine that air. Why not? And I have the room to carry it. And our little humunculi here is going to take one action to get back and the second action to drop off these elements at our tower. And, I, and this tower is really getting very high on elements. So other players should start getting worried about how much element power Palo has here because once he starts to get these ingredients, he's probably going to very quickly start burning through that Philosopher's Stone. And that's exactly what Palo's strategy is. Now we're down here to Witka, and Witka is going to go back for more fire. One, two, three, and that's it. That's the end of those actions. This is going to use one action to drop off that and is going to actually now venture out a little bit further and try to pick up maybe some different types of elements. It would have been great to get some stone, but there's a humunculi that's there. And if I use my second action to move out, I wouldn't have an action to combat the humunculi, but I'm going to set myself up for that because humunculi can battle. So I'm going to set my humunculi. It's almost like Pokemon, right? This humunculi is now set up ready to battle this, humu this humunculi which is a humunculi, which is going to be pretty, uh, that's going to be fun. So we're back up here to Nick. Nick is now to his next turn, and guess what? Both of his humunculi existed until his next turn next to his tower, so my secret quest is now complete. Now, I would not reveal that to players um, immediately. I would just keep that. However, when I, when I gain a Philosopher's Stone which could happen very quickly for Nick because I have a Soul Stone and I have all three components of the Philosopher's Stone. I just need to get them completed. So what do we got here? I need I need Platinum to be able to create that. That's a third level, so I got a lot of transmutation to be able to get that one. And then I need one Copper to be able to complete this. So I need to go get some more Copper, which is, means I need more Wind and more Fire. So I'm going for Wind and Fire, but guess what? My secret quest has been completed. Nobody else knows that but me, but it's done. So I'm going to go back for fire, and I'm going to go back for wind. I can get wind here, wind here, fire. I'm going to go back towards this area. So I'm going to do a one, two. I'm going to use my third action to combat Wicca here and try to steal her soul stone. So I will get one, and she gets three for defense. I really need to get some weapons 
See, that's the thing. I need to I need to get to town and pick up some more uh, some more equipment and try to get a weapon for him. So he's going to attack. And, whoa, where was that? Over here. He gets a one. She defends with three. All right, that was my third action. Um, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else. No more attacking. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to use my homunculi. We're going to do a... Um, let's get... Let's see. I need... I need fire and wind. So I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to use my wisp to get out of there because I feel like I'm, going to, I'm getting set up for an attack here when it's Wicca's turn again. So I'm going to get out of here and try to get some more wind. So I'm going to go one, uh, two, three, kind of wisp around up there at the top. I'm going to use this guy right here to... Uh, that's not mine. I'm going to use this guy right here to lock down... Let's see. How many actions? I can't carry anything, so it's a fight. Ooh, I'm going into a battle. I'm going to go fight. This is going to be so awesome. I'm going to go one. Second action, I'm going to combat Witka. Oh, so great. Okay. You are in trouble. This guy gets four. This Humunculi gets four uh, on the attack. She's going to have one, two, three. She has no other defense. She gets three on the defense. So I'm going to roll my four on the attack. And oh, only two. That's my second action. She gets three on the defense. Can she defend against two? She can. She got a blue crit. That's two. And that is a defense. You got lucky. Man, I wanted to take out, take her out with my humunculi. Because that would have been good. She would have went back to her tower. She would have dropped her soul stone. And then Nick could have ran in and picked it up on his next turn. Good try, Nick. But it didn't work out for you, buddy. All right, back to Palo here. Palo is going to continue his journey uh, onto the tower to drop off his massive pack of elements. So one, oh, hang on, one, two, and now let's see if we can start working on some stuff. We can. However, do I want to use five? I need a. St I need at least one stone and an air. So I'm going to go ahead and transmute uh, for an action for that third action the water and the iron. And that is going to allow me to, from my tower, take this item, this recipe that I had stored here for a soldier's helm. And I used my two elements to transmute this level one item. There are level two and level three items as well. And that's those wisdom points. That's what's going to help you win at the end. And it gives me plus one defense. So I can immediately slot that into one of my two uh, equipment areas. And that now gives me... The Soldier's Helm, plus one defense. I have now four defense. This is really good. He's got a lot of defense and can carry a lot. I may actually go with the leather coat and not even be a combat type character. That's another thing that's cool. You can kind of customize your characters. I think Palo is just going to be a traveling tank. He's going to be able to carry a ton of stuff as well as have a ton of defense. So I'm going to go for this coat, I think, next and try to get that transmuted. That was my third action, so on my next turn, I'm going to use an action to kind of drop off these recipes here, discard these recipes in the tower. I haven't done that yet, and I need to transmute the gold, and I do have what I need to transmute. Oh, no. Did I just use the only? Oh, I did. I need another, I need another water now. I need another water, because I need a water and an earth to make the third gold for my quest. Hey, Humunculi, what are you doing? Well, I think he's just going to use his actions to go on a, a trip to get some more water. So we're going to go one, two. So we're going towards that water, and that's it. We're back here to Witka. Witka is now um, seeing that potentially possible this guy is moving out to either get some elements here or he's going towards that water. So I'm just going to conveniently go right down here for one action. And for the second action, I'm going to go ahead and mine and get some... Whoop, it goes here and get some water. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Witka and I'm going to mine. I'm going to mine fire. Well, guess what? I get two fire. That's for my first action. I'm going to mine fire again, giving me... It's a, and it's plus one element per mining action giving me two more fire so i'm just mining fire like like there's uh you know no fire for tomorrow so that is and some of these are square that's fine so now i have four 
and that's all I can carry. And for my third action, I'm actually going to move out. Now, that's dangerous because no matter where I can go, I'm going to be in range of being able to get hit. This guy is really deadly. So let's hope that he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't get me, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So on this next turn, I am going to attack with my humunculi again with four. Oh, I just cannot roll with this humunculi. That is two, and she's going to get three defense. Two. Blocked it. You lucky. All right, second action with that humunculi. I'm going to attack with four. Give me something a little bit better. You got to be kidding me. Nothing. So I don't even have to defend against that. Unbelievable. Witka lives another day. That is unbelievable. Because all you have to do is win, and it's done. It isn't like you have um uh, hp right if you lose the combat you're done right you lose a soul stone you go back to your tower everything that you're you have drops and the winner gets it now if it's a humunculi it will just drop on the spot and then you will have to get to that spot and pick it up if it's an alchemist it'll just go right to the alchemist so you know she lives another day the wisp is going for um components we need more copper so we need fire we need these two elements here so one two third action we're gonna we're gonna mine and pick up some fire okay and we have a oh that's it we're locked up we can't carry anything else so i might use an action to discard this iron because i don't necessarily need that right now uh when it's the next turn i'm going to use an action to discard an iron element and drop it there and then move on and try to get some more wind so Humunculi is gone, Humunculi is gone. We're now to the Alchemist. Alchemist is just going to go one, two, three, and be ready for uh, gaining that wind. So I can get the wind. That way I don't have to drop anything. That'll work out well. And I only need one copper for this piece of the of the Philosopher's Stone. So we're good there. Okay, back to Palo here. I know this gameplay is going a little longer than I planned, but I'm really getting into this. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the gameplay here and just how fun this game is. And you can see, it. I'm playing three players, obviously Smokey, myself, and and Bear, but the which which gets a little bit more complex, right? But if you're just playing one of these alchemists, it really is this enjoyable experience to watch other players kind of take their simple turn and then figure out, you know, well, what are you going to do on on your next turn and you can also see that the design is executed very very well to where you're kind of on your own adventure through this land as an alchemist but you're going to be running into other things that are basically deterring you from completing sort of your quest right what you're trying to do so it isn't this stressful combat back and forth kind of thing it really is sort of a personal adventure and a journey. And then everybody else is just sort of a deterrent that's kind of in your way. And there's definitely opportunities where players, once they figure out what you're trying to do, which generally happens near the you know, later half of the game, then they're going to start becoming more of a nuisance for you. And you're going to have to get a little more strategic on where you go when. And you're going to have to think about, like, how many actions do other players' humunculize have? And how far can they move? That's going to be very important as you get further along in the game. Okay, first action, we're going to go ahead and dump and discard these um, in here. We have got so many uh, elements now. However, we still need the water. So, he, you know what? He's going to go up and try to get something. So we're, that was one. Let's go two, three. We're going to get up here to Windshire. Now, the way I'm the way I'm playing this quest, and hopefully I'm doing this correctly, is once these elements get dropped off in Windshire, I, I don't believe anybody can just go to Windshire and pick them up. This isn't an area that has elements. There's no... You can't just go here and steal these. They will stay here, and they're part of that quest. Uh, otherwise, that would be incredibly difficult for this player to be able to get nine elements all at once. They would essentially have to work on being able to carry up to nine elements, getting all the way there and dropping all nine elements off at once. I don't believe it works that way. I believe you can just drop these off over the course of gameplay. Um, that's at least how I'm playing it. I don't think another player can pick that up. If that ends up being incorrect, then it would just be incorrect. I'm, I'm playing that particular quest incorrect. But I believe that's how it works. So I don't I don't think once Palo gets here, he'd be able to say, oh, I'm going to steal all this fire and take off with it. You know, good luck, start over. I don't think it works that way. 
But So I'm not really going for that fire. I'm moving Pelo up to that city because I want to research and pick up a Philosopher's Stone card to have that in my uh, in my hand so I can bring it back to my tower and drop it off because I got a ton of stuff going on here. Uh, and I'm probably going to just pick up a couple and discard some things. That way um, I don't go over my hand size limit. So that's Palo's turn. It is his Humunculi's turn. And we're going to go ahead and... Um, you know what? Let's just go towards some more iron. So we're going to go one, two. We're going to go right up here and try to get some more iron. Wicca, what are you doing? Uh, she's got more fire. So she's going to go one, two. She's going to use that third action to discard fire. And that's one, two, three, four... And, oh, did we do it? One, two, three, four. No, she has eight. So she has eight fire tokens now in the city. She needs one more to be able to complete. We'll just use that square one there as kind of a base. She has one more to be able to complete that quest. And that was her third action. So she now is done in the city. We're back up to, well, let's see. What do we want to do with our humunculi here? Humunculi. We're going to go, um, looks like he's trying to sneak in there. So we're going to go one and we're going to combat. So there's two dice that they get for combat, and that's a one, and this one defends with two dice. This one can't actually fight, and it's a one. So it's a wash. The combat was unsuccessful. Okay, so now we're back up to Nick. Nick is going to pick up and mine some of that air. Why not? So now we have everything that we need for, for this piece of the Philosopher's Stone. Let's pick up another one, though. We need to pick up another one. So that's one action. We're going to go two, three. We'll go down to this city, and we're ready. Well, let's make sure. Does Hammer Breach have... Hammer Breach does allow for Philosopher's Stone to pick up. It's right here. And nobody's really done anything with tower extensions just yet. Um, you, you know, you want to remember that as well, because tower extensions are a way every single turn you sort of get some power. You're going to be getting more elemental power, so... Think about that as well. Just haven't really executed on that yet for any of my any of my players. All right, Palo. So Palo is going to go now one action to the city. Second action in Windshire is going to be able to gain. So let's see what we can get here. Okay, we got the third. So we got the third. So we have already done the first. Okay, now we got the third. Okay, that would be our, our third card. We're going to research again. And we're going to pick... Ah, oh, we got another one. We don't need another one, we need a two. So this is really not beneficial to us at all because this one has already been transmuted. So we're just going to go ahead and discard this card and, and we'll just take it at the bottom of the, the stack for demo purposes. So we're going to go ahead and discard that card and we're done. That was the third action. The town, uh, Palo, is now done. And, oh, you know what? Um, whew, can two people be in a town at the same time? Okay, Palo. Now, Palo wants to get into Windshire to be able to gain more recipes for his Philosopher's Stone. However, Wilka is there in Windshire, and only one uh, humong only one alchemist can be there at a time. Just because it's a town doesn't mean everybody can exist there. Uh, per the rules as I understand them, every hex works kind of that way. So, Wilka is in that town, kind of blocking that town, and now I can't get in. So, that's a problem for me. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to stay I'm going to stay close but I'm not going to be able to get into that town. So I'm going to do let's see. If I move here, I could go 1 2 and then use an action. So I'm going to move right here away. That way she doesn't have a you know can just go for like a combat. I'm going to move right here and I'm going to say that's my turn. You don't have to use all your actions if you don't want to. So I'm going to call it right there and then this Humunculi actually can't battle and can't move through this spot. So I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to go right there. Oh, and that's not good either because now I'm right next to this combat Humunculi. Oh, that was not smart. Um, but I did it, so that's where I'm at. We're down here to Wilkin now. Wilkin is one more fire to call this a day with her quest. So she's going to go one, two, three. And now at this point, players are probably realizing, all right, she's fire crazy. And... This this alchemist is like a pyrotechnic here, and she's trying to burn the place down. I mean, and, and she's got to be close to it. So at this point, you're probably going to start trying to block in combat because there's something that she is definitely working on, and that is very clear at this point with his number of fire that is in Windshire. Okay, and I think this is a good place to maybe go ahead and call our gameplay. We've played 
pretty extensively actually, probably a lot more than I wanted to for this video. However, I kind of got into it, and it's just a really cool game. Again, this one's coming to Kickstarter. Watch for it near the end of July. Don't forget about the giveaway on this prototype. You're going to be able to get this right when the Kickstarter ends. One lucky subscriber will be chosen. So remember, hit that subscribe below, comment below here on YouTube, and follow me on Twitter. That's where a lot of these announcements are done. I do tag them in the comments as well. But follow me on Twitter. It's just a much better form of communication. And you can follow along with what the channel is doing, as well as know right away when that winner is picked. All right? So hit that like, hit the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them crits. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time, Bear. Let's roll.